Um, great. Uh, thanks, everyone. My name is David Yeager from University of Texas. Um, I'm a developmental psychologist, which means I really try to understand how things unfold over time. But I borrow insights from social psychology because of the the, the power of a lot of these lab-based manipulations to identify how people make sense of a situation and then how that might shape motivation uh, and behavior over time. And I'm going to do my best to share with you what I view as the inheritance of, of um, 50 or 60 years in the Lewinian mainstream at the intersection of social and developmental psychology. Um, and I think uh, at the highest level of construal, two, two constructs um, play out in a lot of the experiments, the interventions that we do. One is attributional ambiguity, and the second is recursive processes. So uh, what, what we think is that, um, especially in times of difficulty, situations are attributionally ambiguous. It's not clear when you're struggling in, on a math problem, for instance, whether it's because you lack ability, uh, whether it's because you've made a horrible choice to be in this math class, um, whether it's just a tough problem that your teacher uh, put in front of you to make you think hard. Um, and what, uh, the, what, what the field of psychology has really pointed to is that how people make sense of those situations can affect the next step that they take, the motivation that, um, that they find. Um, in addition, after people make sense of some situation, they might then engage in a relationship or join a type of uh, class. Uh, they might study with others or not. Uh, those experiences in turn might in turn shape um, their beliefs and they might update their beliefs. Those beliefs may then inform a subsequent interaction that's attributionally ambiguous. This is what we uh, have called in, in some of our work a recursive process. And um, we think this is just one slice into the problem of enduring behavior change and I want to illustrate this with a, a graph with probably too much on it um, from the college transition. So again, as a developmental psychologist, we try to focus on key transitions in life. Transition from middle school to high school in most of my work. Uh, also transition from high school to college. But you can imagine a young person who uh, wants to go to college, ready to take on loans, um, but might be a little apprehensive about perhaps underrepresentation of his or her group. Um, for instance, for students of color, first-generation students, and then worrying about what it would mean if they failed or what it would mean if they had a hard time, then encountering some kind of situation. For instance, difficulty uh, filling out your financial aid form and things that uh, Bridget and others have, have worked on. Wow, what does this mean? I can't even fill out the form. Am I really you know, cut out to be a college student? Um, over time, maybe you get into a class, not an economics class, but one class where uh, you feel like if you struggle, maybe your professor says you're, makes you feel as though you're not quite smart enough. You're not good enough at this. Um, then over time, maybe, maybe you worry, maybe I'm an admissions mistake. Do I feel comfortable studying in front of my peers where I'm lost, where I'm confused? What will they think of me? Um, over time, you could see how uh, behaviors can lead to more worries. Worries can lead to more behaviors, can lead to lower and lower performance. We think this recursive pl process plays out kind of uh, naturally and in, in, uh, in especially for individuals who face structural disadvantages uh, based on their groups. Um, but the, the psychological insight is that if this is true, then and causal attributions might be able to be changed by giving people a different theory. So an attribution is nothing more than a, a guess about cause and effect. And as good scientists, we know that our theories shape our guesses about cause and effect. Could you give a person a different theory before they make some life transition um, that could lead to a different um, pattern? We call this a lay theory sometimes. Um, so uh, one, one example lay theory is when things are hard, um, it doesn't mean you're dumb. It means that you're getting smarter. Another, another lay theory might be that um, if you're having a hard time fitting in, making friends, um, it doesn't mean you're a loser, not likable. Um, it means that, um, that you still have the potential to form connections and to be included in the community. And the, the, the notion is not that with this lay theory you magically um, get straight A's on all your classes, but it, you might be just a little less apprehensive raising your hand when confused. Um, you might view the cost of, of the potential for humiliation and failure to be a little bit lower. And with a small adjustment, perhaps at a, at a critical period, 
for individuals who might be most sensitive to the context, then and you, might, you might not make this line go up, but you might slow the decline over time. And the mediators here are many, right? Both thoughts and behaviors and contexts. And we're, we're assuming those. Uh, but, uh, but the experimental test is to give people a new theory before they make the transition and see if their decline is a little different. Uh, in one study we did this, we, um, among outgoing seniors at an urban charter school, uh, a couple urban charter schools, uh, these were students who, it's a select group, from communities where maybe college persistence was quite low, and yet, these students were college ready. Uh, they took the SAT. Um, they, uh, they cared deeply about school, had decent grades. Uh, but they might have been apprehensive about coming, to feel about coming to feel that they belonged over time in college. So they read some information before they transitioned to college that difficulties are normal and tend to improve with time. They read real quotes from upperclassmen, both uh, students at elite colleges and graduates of their urban charter network. And in a double blind design, Students completed either treatment or control materials, and then they went their merry way. And we tracked them over time um, through the National Student Clearinghouse. Angela's uh, team, thankfully, they pulled the data every single year and then send us updates. What I'm going to show you is results from Angela's postdoc. Uh, what we find is that in the control, 5% of kids made it uh, to a four-year degree in four years. Right? So this is, these are among college-ready students, relatively low number. Um, and all three of our treatment conditions, in this study at least, uh, we see an increase, um, an average of 19% getting a four-year degree. And um, this is the small sample, we're replicating it. Um, but the idea here is uh, this, the result's not 100%, so belonging is not the only concern, but it's, it's different from zero, and maybe there's some play here in this recursive process. So the takeaways for us uh, first are, in any kind of transition, identify something attributionally ambiguous, then um, craft a new theory that could help people interpret those impending difficulties, but also time the delivery of that to something that might hook into a self-sustaining recursive process. Ultimately, we want to let us as interveners fade away, where students credit their success to the relationships they formed, the thoughts they had, the behaviors they took, not to us as interveners. That's it for me. Thank you very much.